welcome to lecture 43 which is on resampling methods and as the name is suggesting here we will learn that how to actually change the uh, pixel size dimension of the pixel and then uh, replace the dn value at that particular location so let's begin this lecture so when we are doing resampling actually this is done along with the in continuation with the georeferencing which we have learned in the previous lecture so once the image is georeferenced then the next task becomes image resampling and since the orientation of the image has changed so its location geographical location has also changed and we have to bring the dn value at that particular geographical location so we have to assign the dn values to the new pixels in the output image which you have created from the georeferencing so this technique georeferencing technique is basically um, computing the new dn value at the new locations which you have obtained after geo referencing after the transformations so uh, you have to compute the new value and this is what you have to learn in this that how we are going to compute the new value and replace at that particular locations now this uh, could be uh, resampling could be uh, due to the change in resolution also change in the orientation because the orientation of the image has changed uh, rotation change of sampling points or if you are using uh, several images at different resolution then also this image resampling is required in order to use them together so we know that the uh, images which are captured by the different uh, sensor systems and the different camera systems they all have their own limitations and their own properties but when we are analyzing them together to get the better and better results then uh, we should have a similar a same resolution at the same resolution we will try to use them together so in this resampling technique what we are doing is we are generating a new image on a coordinate system taking uh, the input from the uh, different set of the coordinate systems from the input image in other words what you can say the image intensity which we are actually generating at a grid point we are deriving the new values uh, near that location or adjacent to that location and based on the dn values in that particular region we are trying to calculate the new dn value so this uh, resampling involves uh, uh, basically two types of images one is the input image another is the output image now my input image could be at a very very fine resolution and my output image could be at a coarser resolution and this is quite obvious when we are using for example the satellite image from two different sensors one which is giving me very fine resolution another which is giving me coarser resolution so can I use them together after image resampling yes the answer is yes we can use them together we have to actually use that procedure of resampling so this is a mathematical technique whereby you know you are taking care of the size of the pixel also into account so one image has uh, 10 meter pixel another image have a 20 meter pixel and we want to use them together so pixel dimension is different so it has to change the dimension of the pixel also so that uh, you are working at a uniform resolution now down sampling will decrease the number of the pixel in the image suppose i have a image at uh, 20 meter uh, pixel size and i have image at 10 meter pixel size you have to use them together and you are doing the downscaling process so you will have the less number of pixels in the image if you are doing the up sampling process other way around so it will increase the number of pixel so from 20 meter if you want to go to the 10 meter resolution then it is the four actually uh, pixels which will fit into the 20 meter resolution all right so it's a other way around process so resampling uh, can degrade 
uh, the quality of the image also sometimes. This is uh, the uh, process which is shown here. Uh, there is uh, the input image, there the output grid. So, this uh, input and output they will not exactly match with each other now. This is my raw image which I used for georeferencing. And this is my output image which I got after georeferencing. So now because the orientation is different, so the pixel coordinates are different now in that case. So I have to reassign the dn values to all these pixels now at that location. At the new locations now these values are to be assigned and we will take help of the dn values which are present in my original data. So, if I now superimpose them together which is shown here in the right image to overlay them together you will find that the pixels you know some of the pixels are falling over the other pixels. So, now we have to derive the characteristics of the input data the dn values of the input data and try to replace in the output grid. So, this is all the resampling technique is. Now, uh, this example shows that there are three data sets with me. One is at 12500, one is to 12500 scale, another data is 1 is to 25000 scale and the third data is 1 is to 50000 scale. So, here I have uh, at 1 is to 50000 I have only 4 pixels here. So, there are 4 pixels, but there are pixels would increase. Um, to 16 pixels uh, as I go change the scale from 1 is to 50,000 to 1 into 25,000. The pixel will further increase. So, ratio will be you know 1 is to 2, 1 is to 2 ratio, but the number of pixels have increased. So, that means now you have to assign uh, the once you multiply the number of pixels when you are going for a larger and larger scale, you have to assign them the new values because uh, now from the 4 pixels we have 16 pixels. So, all the 16 pixels at 25000 scale should have dn values associated with it. Similarly, all the pixels at 12500 should have the dn values associated with it. So, that we have x, y and the reflectance value at that particular point. So, now we have such kind of example from the satellite images also. We have different satellite images at different resolution, IRS data, Sentinel data, the MODIS data, Landsat images, they are available to me at different cell resolutions. So, when I am processing them together, the cell resolution, the resolution of the each pixel should ideally be the same. And this is what we are doing actually in resampling. We are homogenizing these spatial attributes so that we can use them together this data set which is available at different resolution. There are three methods available to me for resampling. One is the nearest neighborhood technique, another method is called bilinear interpolation and third method is called the cubic convolution method. So, these three methods are used in the first method. Uh, what it will do is it will assign the value of the nearest pixel. So, new pixel will be assigning the value digital value of the nearest pixel to the new pixel location. If you remember the overlap then it will take the nearest value and take the dn value from that and assign to the new location in the nearest neighborhood. So, as the name itself is suggesting nearest value it will take. Then in bilinear interpolation, what it will do is will take uh, instead of one single pixel, it will take the four pixels which are in the vicinity of the new pixel location and try to read the dn values of those four pixel and linear interpolation. Bilinear means that one will be in x direction, another will be in y direction. So, two times the interpolation will be done in order to get the dn value at the new location. So, the interpolation is a linear interpolation. Then the third is the cubic convolution. In cubic convolution, uh, number of pixels would increase. So, now we have 16 
pixels nearest to the new pixel locations. So, we will read all the 16 pixels, we know the d n values of these pixels and then try to linearly correlate in x direction and y direction interpolate the values and then get the value at that new locations. So, you can see from these three, we can understand from the three process probably the nearest neighborhood is much faster way of doing the calculation by linear will take a little more time. Cubic convolution will take much more time because every time we have to read 16 surrounding pixels and do the mathematical computation part. So, let us understand them in more detail. So, nearest neighborhood will take the closest pixel to the new location and once it is picking up the value from the original image. So, what it is doing it, it is retaining the original value, it is not changing, it is not doing any mathematical computation, it is picking the nearest value and replacing to the new values. And this is considered to be a very very fast method because of almost no computation involved here. And uh, this is we are using uh, for categorical data. So, if the data has certain categories we are using for that particular data and it will preserve the original value. So, if the uh, in my original image the value was 20, then it will remain 20 also in my output image, it will not be changed to some other values. That is the advantage of this resampling method or uh, nearest neighborhood uh, resampling method. So, this approach uh, will actually uh, pick the value uh, from the uncorrected pixel, nearest uncorrected pixel and it will replace to the corrected. Corrected pixel means the georeference pixel which we have done georeferencing. Now, this method is very simple, this is the advantage of this. Computationally, it is efficient preserving the original value, but the disadvantage is also there for this particular method and the disadvantage is that uh, in noticeable positional error, especially along the linear features. So, linear features becomes the blocky because of the realignment of the pixel is there. So, linear feature uh, will not appear to us linear, but it will appear stepped kind of a format. So, that is the disadvantage uh, of this method. So, let us see that what are the other methods are doing. The second method which is bilinear interpolation method, it is now taking the four surrounding pixels. So, if I have the corrected image, if I have the original image, superimpose them together. So, at the new location uh, from the previous image, it will find out which are the four pixels, nearest pixels and using the weighted distance average. So, it will calculate now, there are some mathematical transformations which will be done with the four values. So, weighted distance interpolation will be carried out and using that whatever is the new value, that new value will be replaced. So, here when it is doing that, that 20 value which was present in my original data that may become 19 or that may become 21 when we are taking the weighted distance average. Now, it is we are using for the continuous data. Examples here are like my elevation data is continuous, my slope data is continuous as they do not have any distinct boundary. So, it is a continuous data, I have um, elevation 250, then 251, 252, 253. So, like that, you know, these kind of a data, this technique by linear would work very, very well and it will smoothen the data like a low pass filter. So, you will learn low pass filter, this is a smoothening filter. So, your details become smooth, the output becomes smooth when you are applying the bilinear interpolation method. This is the image smoothening method, it will smoothen the uh, output and uh, the output raster, uh, raster grid, uh, but not as much as the cubic convolution. It will smoothen the output raster grid, but not as smoothen as the cubic convolution. So, here the example are temperature gradient digital elevation model because this is a continuous data. So, this is working, this technique is working well on that kind of a data sets. Now, if we see uh, uh, the uh, cubic convolution method, the cubic convolution method which is the third method 
it will take now more number of pixels. So, it will take 16 uh, nearest pixels and again weighted distance average would be calculated from these 16 pixels. So, the mathematics becomes little complicated when we are dealing with the 16 pixel and we are linearly interpolating in x direction where y direction and then in x direction. So, several computations are required in order to get the value at the new locations. It is also used for the continuous data like uh, the previous method bilinear. It is commonly used for photographs and similar data and it will tend to sharpen the image. So, like a high pass filter, high pass filter also you will learn. Uh, so, it will sharpen the image, it will not blur the image, it will not smoothen the image, but it will sharpen, reverse the process of that. Now, this uh, mathematical function is cubic and that is why this is known as the cubic convolution technique and uh, normally we consider it uh, much better than the bilinear interpolation because it will not have a disjointed kind of a appearance as we find in the nearest neighborhood interpolation. So, we find a blocky kind of a figure, we will not find that blocky kind of a figure. But uh, cubic convolution technique basically is 10 times more as compared to the nearest neighborhood path. So, we have to see uh, the computational time, we have to see the accuracy achieved uh, while using these techniques. But if you see the literature, literature is full of the first technique which is the nearest neighborhood technique because it is much much faster computationally simpler, simpler to apply. These are the results of all the three techniques. When I apply a nearest neighborhood technique, the image is a blocky type of the image. The linear feature will become slightly blocky, you know, if you try to enhance this image on your computer screen. The bilinear interpolation uh, will smoothen the image, uh, like small blurness will appear when we are applying the bilinear and the cubic convolution image is like applying the high pass filter to the data. So, these are the three different uh, sets of results output which we are getting from uh, the three results. As, as I told you that uh, the third one is much more accurate, uh, the cubic convolution is much accurate than the nearest neighborhood, but nearest neighborhood is much faster and lot of people are using because of the speed, because of the efficiency nearest neighborhood technique. So, uh, coming back to the mathematics of these uh, three techniques, uh, as we can see here that uh, there is uh, one uh, image which is the original image, raw image here and another image is the image which is the geo referenced image. So, there are two images and their pixel locations are now different. So, at the new pixel locations, our job is to assign the value. So, here uh, in the diagram, when we are talking of the nearest uh, neighborhood image, you can see uh, there is a original image which is shown by the dashed. So, original image is shown by those grids, by dashed lines, whereas by the firm line, the corrected image is shown. So, this is the corrected image by the firm line. So, we have uh, pixels at different locations when we are talking of the different pixel. So, in the uh, original image, this is the pixel location here, but in the new image after georeferencing, the pixel has been shifted to this location. So, now uh, from the center of this pixel, we will see which is the nearest pixel all around and pick up the dn value of the nearest pixel and assign to this new pixel that is the image. So, the light gray shade is the pixel where value is to be assigned and that dark gray shade is the pixel which the value from there will be picked because this is the nearest pixel. So, it will calculate which is the nearest pixel and uh, on the basis of the uh, distance, nearest distance, pick up the dn value and replace the dn value there. So, this is what it is doing actually in all the. So, this is that uh, nearest neighborhood technique will find out that this is the output pixel center. So, this uh, at this particular location, the value is replaced by taking the nearest pixel distance. So, this is all calculations part which is shown that here it will see which is the 
nearest pixel this is the new pixel location the nearest pixel is 100 so the value will be replaced at that particular location as 100 so this is a very very simple kind of a technique not much of the mathematics involved and it will retain the original value so it is not doing any computation if you look at the strength and the weakness of that the it is very fast fastest algorithm as far as the computational time is concerned it is retaining the original data but if we see the weakness then straight lines such as the road railway line they become the stepped stared because of the shift in the pixel locations new pixel location so you won't find a linear feature which was appearing very smooth is now that is smooth so generally uh, the image would appear like a blocky kind of the image now bilinear cubic convolution method the same thing here that in the bilinear cubic convolution method the light gray pixel we have to find out the value of this light gray pixel what is the new dn value and the dark one which you see is the nearest four pixels so it will read the dn value from the nearest four pixel and try to interpolate the value at that now when it is doing interpolation then it can get a altogether a new value which was not present there so one can see the similar kind of example the interpolation has to be done at this particular point and this is the weighted distance interpolation there are four surrounding pixels the value of those four surrounding pixel is 100 120 110 and 115 so through the mathematical calculations of these taking the weighted distance what will be the value at that uh, new locations this uh, algorithm is doing bilinear interpolation is doing so it will calculate the value from these four pixels now in this location horizontal interpolation so what is the new value here and what is the new value here it will calculate with the help of the weighted distance method so once it knows the value at these two locations it will take weighted distance of that value and uh, now weighted distance of that value is 108.2 uh, 118 and 104 are the new values which has been obtained the linear interpolation now giving me that value will be 108.2 at the new point same way we are doing for the vertical interpolation so this is the that bilinear interpolation the most reliable of the interpretation routine and uh, in terms of the speed intermediate between the three um, cannot be used much for the categorical data third one is the cubic convolution technique where we are using for 16 pixel so again at that pi pixel location which is the light gray color um, 16 pixels in the surroundings are taken and and determine the new values by taking the property of the 16 pixels. Now mathematics becomes more complicated. So there are 16 pixels, dark dots, and the value at the white spot is to be calculated mathematically. So again, the weighted distance linear interpolation will be carried out with the help of these uh, 16 pixels. So this is the uh, you know kind of a uh, cubic equation which one can derive from these. 16 pixel value and can find out the new value at that particular location now this is the most computer intensive of the three algorithms but it will provide the uh, more correct results better results as far as the accuracy is concerned but sometimes it can cause the ringing effect at the sharp edges if there are sharp edges in the image you will get the ring effect at the end so for example here i am showing you uh, the original image where uh, we have applied the three all the three algorithms one by one so only a small part which is shown in the box has been taken and this is the nearest neighborhood technique which has been applied in that box which i showed you earlier now you can see the buildings which were smooth in the boundary now one can see the blocky blocky kind of uh, edges of the building whereas they are smooth actually on the ground they are in the straight line uh, so you get this kind of effect when you are applying the nearest neighborhood technique same image 
when you are applying the other technique which is the bilinear interpolation technique slightly blurness has occurred in this particular data in the bilinear interpolation and the third one is the cubic convolution technique you have applied the third technique on the same data set. If we uh, compare these three together, these are the three, all the three techniques which have been applied together, we find the accuracy wise, this is, this is much, much better, but the speed wise, the first one is better, the nearest neighborhood technique is better. So, we have to do that, once we have done the georeferencing, we have to do the resampling process and once it is done, then we can actually use these images further. So, like image mosaic, maybe we have to create a mosaic from these images. I have to, uh, now all the images are georeferenced and they are resampled, you know they have the same spatial resolution. I can create a mosaic from these images, join them together. So, this is the example here which shows uh, you are creating the image mosaic from uh, resampled and georeferenced images. So, these are the three images with overlap region, one can see the part of the building also, this is appearing in all the three images. So, there is a common portion in the image. Now, since these images are perfectly georeferenced and, and they are resampled together, so now creating the mosaic, a digital mosaic is not a really big challenge with this and with the help of the um, certain points whose coordinates are known to me in one image, now I will select the same points in the second image, the same point in the third image and then with the help of a simple transformation making all them overlay on the each other, uh, I can create the image mosaic. So, this is a one single image which has been created now after joining three images. So, that means if my area is large, it is not covered by a single image, I can join them together and see the bird's eye view of the area for carrying out the analysis. Now, I can use this particular mosaic uh, for creating the thematic maps or creating a vector based data set from this. I can do that only when uh, the images are geo referenced and resampled together. So, summary of this is that uh, the nearest neighbor whose technique is maintaining the geometry and retaining the original dn values whereas the bilinear and cubic methods they are producing some kind of a smooth images a smoothened images and altering the dn value in the output image so sometimes you will get the new dn values which may not be a part of the data set altogether nearest neighborhood technique is applicable to both discrete data and continuous data. Whereas, the bilinear and cubic uh, interpolation techniques, they are working well to the continuous data. As I told you, slope, temperature, you know, these are those data sets. Resampling is used extensively as uh, in image processing because it has a lot of applications now, not only in remote sensing, but in medical science, in industrial applications. So, that is why the resampling technique is also very important along with the georeferencing. So, that is all about this lecture. Thank you.